Uh, we have a senior integration. We have, we have a senior driver, which we have submitted to OpenStack. It's under review right now. Uh, we are also working on uh, Swift for object. So uh, you know that's going to come come later on. So so by plugging into Cinder and plugging into the OpenStack ecosystem, we are providing all the data services that we have explained up until now. You know, all of a sudden the door opens to all those data services within our cloud infrastructure. Obviously, a private cloud in, in most cases. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have a roadmap item for S3 integration for public clouds. Yeah. So one of the things that we'll be enhancing, you know, going into 2016 is today we're block based and getting to that, you know, object and file support. So now in a single platform, we can support file block and object. Right. right. So that's uh, that's on the uh, on the uh, roadmap. Then in the beginning, you were saying that file is legacy and rubbish, but you're going to be supporting file. No, we're going to be supporting it because, because yeah, there is a need out there to support file. We, we, we don't say it's rubbish, but you know. So we, we actually created an, an object uh, a roadmap before file because you know we think the newer implementations are going to be implemented so on object. Is that file and object at the front end or the back end? So initially, it's at the front end to support the file type, the, the data types. Okay, so your back end would be uh, block storage, but your front end uh, can be a, a file, uh, an SMB uh, share, or an S3. No, actually, client. the back end, the back end in terms of object, is going to be an, a true object store. A true object store on prem, and then you know we, we're gonna we're gonna have a file front end and an object front end to it, and in addition to our block front end, and, and the block obviously is there. Right. Yeah. You, you mentioned adding crash consistent snapshot to the community driver. I don't know much about OpenStack Sender, but so what? They have zero snapshots. Uh, they have snapshot functionality with with the latest release. I think with but it's Kilo, not crash consistent. It's not application it's, aware. It's not crash consistent. Well, application well. aware isn't crash consistent. So which one is it? Is it crash consistent? Or to is my knowledge, aware? it's not crash consistent. I'm talking about what you're offering. We are going to be offering a crash consistent snapshot to the community. I, through I don't the know. I don't know what they would have that's worse than crash consistent. I'm just trying to understand. Like crash you're, inconsistent, isn't it? Right? Yeah. The, the, I mean, there is way. nothing worse than the consistency of a, a crash. crash. Yeah, exactly. So I don't, yeah. I don't understand how that's listed as a, as a roadmap item. Like, you're saying that's something good you're adding. That's crash consistent snapshots are. So in I think case all snapshots are crash consistent, unless you do something clever. So to in them. case you're running, uh, I guess that really should say application. And oh well. Is really what it should yeah, say. Yeah, but, which but is you could certainly know what it's supposed quite different. to say. I, well, I, you forgive me because this is probably my, my mistake here, Curtis. Um, but you know, we are adding the uh, the application aware snapshot. I mean, for example, they do not have application aware snapshots in the center driver today. Right, so, so if that's an application aware snapshot. That would make more yeah, sense. This is this is but. my fault on on not putting it correctly on the slide. Okay. Okay. Right. So, so the other thing is with the replication for both local and remote, right? The replication in the driver it doesn't really work very well today. So there's some things that we're going to add to that based on our knowledge, and then adding mirroring, which is a, will be some additional functionality that's not there today. So again, not only we have a center driver, but we're also trying to then add back to the community to make that driver better. Do, shall we jump in the interest of time? Let's go ahead and jump to. Do we want to look at you know a couple of the other things that we're going to go do? So yes. So as as far as our roadmap items, uh, uh, you know, because there were some questions there, uh, let's just move on. Uh, it's yeah, it's it was up. It's up higher. It's right. No, it's let's see. Uh, 2016 and beyond. That's yeah. yep. That's what it is. So, so this is what these are the major. I mean, we have we have a huge uh, list of things for 2016. These are the highlights of it. So, intelligent auto tiering. That's something that we definitely need to get done, especially in a disaggregated model. And you know, we can really show a TCO model with with the uh, with the intelligent auto tiering. Again, uh, like I mentioned, it's, it's based on heat maps and and, and based on uh, you know automatic. Like that already. Sorry? I thought you guys had that already. You can manually tier, but now today, how do you leverage our data mover combined with the policy engine and the analytics to go now put policy-based intelligent auditing in place? So, you know, you can move workloads around based on, you know, policies and intelligence versus manual. Right. So this is, this is basically tiering between different, uh, uh, you know, like <laughs> SSD tier and HDD tier and, and a cold tier, you know, being able to place the data on the right 
uh, physical media mm -hmm. and being able to manage it that way. In different uh, paradigms, different vendors, even right. cloud as a bucket. Right. A block support we have, a file and object is, is, uh, is coming real soon. Swift and Ceph is coming soon, SAP HANA, and uh, QoS. There was, a, there was a question there, that's definitely. How, how so, would you integrate uh, with Ceph? Well, how pardon? would you do that? How, so, how, would you, uh, how would you integrate with Ceph? What would you so, understand how you? Uh, we can sit underneath Ceph as well. Uh, to manage the physical layer. Okay. So storage for Ceph. Okay. Yeah. In a way, okay, in a way we provide that, a lot of functionality storage. that Ceph already provides. Right. I'm and not sure uh, I see how that helps if you, it's already a distributed storage layer in its own right. Doesn't if, seem to add a lot. I'm struggling to see how that. Uh, to how do you help people get to it in a less customers. disruptive way? Because if we're already in place and then we can give them a simpler path there versus shifting everything over. So. so SAP HANA support for non-prod? So or we are going to be, uh, so a free store storage server will be on the SAP HANA certification list so that we can use it. Obviously you have to have, you know, SAP HANA certified physical storage as well, um, which we'll obviously work with um, because almost all the storage we have, <laughs> SAP HANA certified, we're already certified with. So our free store storage server gets certified and then you can stick us in and now you can have a common interface into SAP HANA uh, and not have to manage things physical device by physical device any longer. And that's coming uh, in, in early 2016.